Happy Tuesday night from Orlando, Florida. My name's Ken Posick. I am going to bring to you guys a bunch of stuff about Orlando tonight. We've got four or five stories that are about real estate, theme parks, living in Orlando. And dive in if you live here or you're thinking of moving here. This will be good information for you. So thanks for hanging out with us on a Tuesday night. If you're watching the replay, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're just finding this, if you didn't watch it live. And uh, yeah, we got like 300 new subscribers over the past week, which means a ton uh, that people are engaging and uh, just like kind of like this little engine that could. We're trying to be like the top news source, real estate source for everybody in Central Florida. I'm going to bring on my partner for tonight, Chase Farmer. What's going on, buddy? How are you? What's up, everybody? Uh, so if you are watching live, drop down in the comments below where you're watching from. That's the way we like to start off every week. We kind of see where are, where, where are you hanging out at tonight? Where, where in the world? We had last week, we had somebody on a helicopter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a helicopter. I think there was somebody on a boat. What's going too? on from New York? It's... Well, it's not us. We're not live from New York, but you're live from New York. So what's going on? Uh, off to Disney. What's going on, Kenneth? My mom calls me Kenneth. So what's going on? Uh, good good evening from Lakeland. We got somebody from Waterley, like in Winter Garden, local, which is awesome. We got somebody from Cornwall, UK for the win. Is it for the win? Do you think it's for the win? I think They're the farthest like away or so far. Like... That's probably for the win. <laughs> uh, we got some people from... Oregon, what's oh, that's boom, landed the helicopter from <laughs> fighting <laughs> fires. That is, I gotta catch up with this guy on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, you got to because I need to see what this guy does for a living. That's amazing. Uh, I finally caught a live. What's going on, Eli? Downtown right now, downtown Orlando. Good to see you from Four Corners and from Memphis. We got a bunch of other people checking in already in early. We already got over 70 people hanging out with us Tuesday night. Mr. Chase Farmer, how are you, bud? I am doing just standy on this Tuesday evening. It is. It's uh, it's kind of wild. I've got some stories. Let's get into them. Uh, first one, housing, Orlando housing vacancy rate, worst in the nation when compared to other major U.S. cities. This is from the Orlando Business Journal, and, and they've, they've re-siphoned it from other, a couple other places. Orlando, one in seven cities with residential vacancies surpassing the national average, according to a real estate data firm, Clever. What do you think about this? Is it saying you know, houses that are owned and are not are, like, what is, what is the stipulation? Well, that's the confusing thing, my friend. So the <laughs> problem is that, okay, so here's the deal. Orlando has home to second homes. Yes. But also a massive amount of Airbnbs mm -hmm. and you have people that like don't even have mailboxes here, right? Like literally they live here a month out of the year. They rent it out the other 11 months out of the year. And so it's a little bit of a deceiving kind of thing. Uh, with this whole article. And so I started digging into this a little bit more to figure out like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this a good thing, a bad thing? Do we need to be worried? What do I need to let the viewers know, right? And so what I found out over here was going through like the short-term weekly results. This is a, a hotelmanagement.net. They put out um, basically articles around how the short-term Airbnb market is doing. And you look at the US hotel performance and then you scroll down here and what's going on with sort of the... Um, the top markets for short-term rentals of the top, top 25 markets, Orlando is number one and in seed a higher occupancy increase over 2019. And the reason why they go over 2019 is because that's what COVID happened, 2020, 2021, not historical norms. Uh, so 2019 was a banner year. We had the most remarkable amount of people visiting Orlando. I think it was like 78 million people and they're saying that Orlando is doing 2% better than then. And so it gets you thinking like Airbnbs are blowing up here. They're everywhere. We did a, a, a TikTok and a reel about it today. By the way, you're doing an amazing job with our TikTok. You want to give it a little plug? Yeah, absolutely. You should follow us on TikTok and Instagram at the Orlando Reel. We post every single day. Yeah, man, we had a, we had a little bit of a viral moment for I think we had six hundred thousand views on one of those TikToks. Yes, we got like ten thousand followers on TikTok over one video. Over one video, yeah. exactly. But but going uh, back going back to the vacancy yeah. thing, yeah. do you think that this is a good thing for Orlando, a bad thing for Orlando? I mean, every time like I'm about to set up something with like a group of friends, right? And we're yep. looking at the larger Airbnbs. We're looking at ones that hold you know ten to fifteen people, depending on how many people show up. Yep. Um, it's very affordable. It's great for somebody that's coming in if you're splitting it amongst that many people. Um, but, you know, I, I see that a lot of them are like in the same communities. You know, you'll yeah. have you'll have 10 listings all on Airbnb in the same community. 
is that a good thing for Orlando? Is it a bad thing? You know, what do you think? So I think that the fact that you have this many people moving here in or this many people visiting here and that fact that the short term rentals are going up in terms of occupancy, that's a great thing. I think that if you look at the theme parks here, I don't know about you, man, we're gonna talk about theme parks later in the show, but they're packed. They're they're always so packed. more packed, like, more packed than they've I've ever seen. ever been. <laughs> yeah. And I don't I don't know if that's people not wanting to travel overseas as much. And so naturally, Orlando and, and Florida in general become like the de facto place that so many people go. Um, but man, I, I think it's a good thing. I think that the <clears throat> the investment in the area is really strong. I also think that like Disney, Universal, a lot of these other places have now ha- like been forced to upgrade some of their hotels mm-hmm. because they want to keep people on property, right? But when supply and demand happens and these like, you know, go stay at the Grand Floridian, it's like $1,100 a night or yeah. or you go get an Airbnb for 600 bucks a night. People are going to the houses. And so, yeah, um, yeah I, think that's, I think it's a good thing. I mean, for people going on vacation, it's a great thing. I, yeah. I like the fact that I can house that many people for like, we're going to stay for a whole week and staying at a nice place with one of the arcades and the pool table, everything pool in the backyard. It's going to be like $300 a person, you know? Yeah. Steal. Yeah. It's, it seems like a steal. Um, let's, I wish, I wish it was like, let's go is their name, but it's just let's condo <laughs> hotels. What is the financing requirement versus a regular condo? Are these worth buying and are there risks? Resale prices seem lower. Yes. So condo tells is what we call them. Condo hotels. They kind of look like apartments. They kind of look like hotels, but they're operated basic, basically more like hotels, right? So you own the unit yourself and then somebody on site has management. They help you book and that's good because you're constantly booked, but it's bad because they take like 40% of the gross revenues and you really can't use anybody outside of the building. You're, you're kind of buying into that local management place. And so they're typically a little harder to finance. They're harder to, excuse me, they're harder to, um, sell sometimes because, because of the lack of financing, but there's plenty of banks that do it. Um, it will be at a higher interest rate. You can't live there more than six months out of the year. Like in, in local one, there's a big one called the Grove, which is beautiful. They got a crazy water park here. Um, but you got to either pay cash or you take like a higher interest rate, like seven, eight, eight 8%. And so, um, yeah, just not as, as desirable as some of the other places. What's going on from Apopka? You got some other people. I saw somebody from uh, from Austin checking in. What's up? Jennifer Schaefer from Austin. You got John from Livonia. It's always good to see y'all from hanging out. What else are we talking about tonight? Uh, let's talk about this next one I think is interesting because job growth is on everybody's mind. Some other people, Regina already mentioned, what do I think about layoffs happening? Do I think that it's impacting the economy? Uh, I still think that there's way more jobs out there than there are people for them. <clears throat> when I go on Indeed and some other places, um, to me, I think tech is obviously seeing a, a bit of a hit. There's other things that are getting hit, but overall the job market is still really good. So anyways, Florida, the best Metro for tech talent. This is something that kind of shocked me says CBRE. They did a a store, a study. Orlando is number one in Florida for tech talent and 29th best in America. Obviously that's pretty far down the list. Yeah. But but, I mean, that's not surprising though. If you compare it to some of the other like massive ones, I'm just surprised that we're number one in Florida. I would have assumed maybe Miami agreed. Um, But yeah. Yeah. And so they go into it and then you have job growth. There's 42,000 people who work in Metro Orlando in tech occupations. This is just the city of Orlando, right? So you and I, we, we think that like, this is, this is more like central Florida, right? We, yeah. we, we count the, the five County area, maybe even the six County area, if you want to add in Volusia. Um, but basically they're saying that there's 42,000 people in the city of Orlando uh, that are in tech. That's up 17% since 2016. And uh, in terms of small market growth, we're seeing a lot of a lot of big growth here. So, you yeah. know, it's pretty cool. It's I like only it. Gonna keep, it's only going to keep going up. Yeah. Wage growth is going up. There's a lot of companies moving here for whether it's uh, talent reasons or it's just cheaper to operate in Florida. But I think that the more we get outside of hospitality, the stronger that Orlando becomes. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. A hundred percent. All right. So let's talk, speaking of real estate, uh, let's talk about this one. Florida lawmakers discuss a plan 
deal to deal with skyrocketing rents in Orange County. So um, Senator Randolph put together a three point plan for county commissioners to consider. They've been going back and forth about rents here in Orlando for a while because rents are, are skyrocketing everywhere. Apartments, mm -hmm. houses, <clears throat> everything. Right. And we're Any, not anywhere. keeping up anywhere. Exactly. So um, they're talking about what would they do in Orange County. They're basically going to try to get rid of the institutional investors, which I think is uh, is a good thing. You know what the in in institutional investors are? Is it the people that keep trying to grab a bunch of stuff up and yeah. hold on to it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the, it's Wall Street, you know, coming yeah. in and, and buying up 10, 15, 20,000 houses across the country. Yeah. Uh, invitation homes. I found this out today. Invitation homes, they bought up like... 60,000 homes nationwide, single family homes, which, which the crappy thing is that's like homeowners that would have loved to buy those. Yeah. Right. But they've driven up prices. Um, they're the number one like person that's going against like, they, they're basically like the biggest slumlord in the country essentially at this yeah. point, because they have got like shoddy work, not doing permits, trying to evict people when there was a moratorium. It's kind of a, kind of a mess. So how does Orlando fight that essentially they're saying uh there's three things one they're going to try to put laws and taxes against people buying up multiple uh properties like that um this includes smaller units expanding uh existing buildings by building up instead of out they're going to basically try to incentivize some people to create new houses and then disincentivize people to buy up a bunch of a bunch of single family properties so i think that's probably smart uh absolutely yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually in on it um, as an investor, <laughs> as somebody who owns property. I'm still welcoming it because I feel like it needs to happen in the area just it's for the, sustainability. It's the, it's the larger companies that are doing the real damage. It's not, Correct. you know, people that have a few properties and, you know, it's yep. whenever these big companies from all over the place are coming in and buying everything. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I have some questions here. Eli says, is uh, Malaya at Celebration a condo hotel? It is. And that's why you look at like, I think there were 11 sales last year and 10 of them were all cash. And then one of them was a mortgage. So it's, it's, and then you look at the Malaya, like it's a two bedroom, one bath kind of like condo hotel. That same unit, if it was able to get financing, would probably be worth like four to five hundred thousand dollars in celebration. But they're selling for like one hundred and seventy, because it's just not financeable and all that kind of other issues. Off to Disney says Chase like his sunny, likes his shirt <laughs> sunny side up. Sponsored by Denny's. I'll take it. I'll not take this it. week. Not this I'll week. take the. I'll take a Denny's sponsorship. <laughs> Sub from on uh, Altamonte. It's it's all it's Altamont. We've, we've that, already, we we figured settled. this out because I was I was told live <laughs> like a month ago that I was this, wrong. This is, is settled Altamont. settled science over yep. here. Yeah, uh, Jennifer says we would like to move to Orlando and have a place for our parents there too. What's your advice on fifty five more communities, Dell Webs and others? So um, I think they're great. I think that there's plenty of opportunity here for that. Dell Webs great. They've got a new one over in Horizon West. Kahov has one. It's called Four Seasons. No affiliation to the actual Four Seasons, but gated golf community uh, a lot of single mostly single story um properties there um yeah i think it's great there's there's really good opportunity and obviously it's florida so there's a demand yeah um justin i just talked about you with liz this morning so congratulations on your new place there uh i know she was excited to help you and uh, let's get the process started i'm excited for you big time um chase you visited something new this week would you would you visit I went to Arcade Monsters, also the real in TikTok or the TikTok that blew up this week. Yeah. Um, so what is this place? This place is the largest arcade in Florida, uh, I believe, based on the information that is online. Yeah. Uh, 150 it, games, seven it's, rooms. It's massive. Um, the best part about it to me is there's a there's a full bar, but you just go in, you pay 20 bucks. And it may be more on the weekends. I don't know. But in the week, we just went in. You pay 20 bucks. They give you a wristband. And that wristband lasts you all day. They told oh, me I could. They told 19, me I could. 19, 19. Yeah. They told me that I could come in literally any time between whenever I came in and 2 a.m. And if, <laughs> as long as I still had the wristband on that, I was able to play. I mean, there was so many. Wait, are games. there tournaments here? Yes. Yes. Look at the, this guy. He's a referee. <laughs> but the. the um. There's so many games. There's a lot of obscure stuff that I've never seen before in person. Uh, I'm a big like music game person. So like there was all these like Japanese music games that I'd never played yeah. before. Um, 
they had just a lot of obscure stuff. They had some really old stuff. And then they do the competitions and they have like game consoles, like actual game consoles, like PS5s and Switches and everything just everywhere. So yeah. if you're if you're there and it's a late night and you want to drink and you want to have fun with your friends, like if there's not a game available, you can literally just sit down in front of a TV. There's so many TVs everywhere and just play something with people. It was very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Greg says it's in his backyard. It's worth it. And it's fun and worth it. I think, yeah, $20, you're going to go below like 60 at David Buster's yeah. for like some mediocre games. And there's a bunch of, here's the cool thing. I'm trying to figure out how to do this even better is like the whole nostalgic thing, right? Like you and I, obviously I'm a little bit older than you are, but like we're both nostalgic about the things of our, of our youth. Mm -hmm. And if you can go play the games like that you grew up with here or, or like your parent, I you know, it's pretty cool that there's so much good stuff too man I mean, it's like it's a good mixture because there was some stuff i like it's embarrassing but i used to play a lot of ddr dance dance revolution mm -hmm. that sounds right you, that fits yeah that, that fits the me. shirt the shirt actually makes yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. and they had like old machines new machine i mean they just had so much stuff it was very very cool yeah I love it, man. Um, here's a question. And actually, yeah, make sure you drop questions down below too. We're happy to answer. That's kind of what this is about. This is really not just about Chase and I talking about the news, although that's part of it. Answering your questions about living in Orlando, real estate, all that good stuff. Make sure you drop it down below. One of them was uh, Sophie says, advice on putting offers in homes. We have put in three offers in the Castleberry area, been beat out by cash offers, even when ours is the highest. Well, I'll tell you what, that's starting to slow down. And so I guess my, my advice to you would be don't lose heart because uh, many of these big institutional buyers that I was just talking about, they're starting to pull back and say like, let me just see what happens with the market. And so we're putting a lot of buyers in homes and realistically, like very, very clearly here, the market's not falling apart. It's not the government stepped in, raised interest rates. And so because of that, uh, you know, you've essentially have a little bit of pullback, which is good. Like everything was more expensive cars, watches, houses, everything. Yep. And so you raise interest rates. And I think that that was a really strong thing, which is actually a good, little segue uh, to talk a little bit about this real quick. So this is something we do every time we go live, talk a little bit about the MLS uh, stats for Central Florida, the five areas that we cover, which are uh, Orange, Osceola, Lake, Seminole, and Polk, and a little bit of Volusia. Um, but anyhow, there's been a thousand new listings. This is pretty much steady for the past two yep. months now since we've been doing this. So a thousand new listings. Again, you got some price increases, some bold old people um price decreases are still happening which is you know typical for what we're seeing but then yeah right there sold a thousand pending a thousand it's all really very very steady i mean if you had like 1500 new homes and only 500 pendings that's a problem that's a that's a huge like like red flag this is right? this is the first month or the first week i think that it's kind of evened out based on last week it's been it's been like kind of evening at like this is the first week that last last week's numbers and this week's numbers are very similar agreed yeah it's, it's getting to be really like really much more even killed like we had a little bit of a dip and then all of a sudden everything just leveled right off i do think that also interest rates dropped to like low fives like they were touching six and over six two weeks ago then it dropped to like five and a half and then the average interest rate last week was 5.13 on as of friday of this past week uh and so you're hovering right at that five and i think if we dip back into the fours mm -hmm. which many people are talking about by the end of the year um i think that we're going to be kind of back off to the races uh matthew says they have a ddr machine at one of the rentals in encore uh i'm jealous that's a goal right that's, that's that is a goal <laughs> I love it. You uh, you were talking about an Airbnb. You should probably go to on. It's that's in Reunion. That's a great, it's a great area. You guys should check it out. Yeah. Uh, give me the link. <laughs> <laughs> give me the link. Drop your link, Matthew. Uh, Kenny, what's up? I've been watching you since 3K. Keep going. Would love to have you in my restaurants. Uh, yeah, of course, man. We'd love to come see you. Where I'm right by your your my billboard is right next to your your next to your restaurant, man. So we got to come say hi. Make sure you put that down, Chase. I'm doing it right now um all right what's going on brandon i appreciate you man thank you so much uh lee thinking about buying in williamsburg any opinions pros cons all right chase you're not a real estate agent you're a content guy but yeah. williamsburg when you first hear williamsburg <clears throat> where do you think about that in regards to the area i'll be honest with you i've never i've I know nothing about Williamsburg. So Williamsburg is a little pocket right next to SeaWorld. And it's right over by like where, um, where like Disney's Vista Way used to be. 
And so um, there are apartments and that kind of thing. And so there's only like a little bit of kind of housing over there. The majority of it is apartments and retail and all that kind of stuff. That being said, I do kind of feel like because of the pullback or the, uh, like the, the tech that the rental is kind of going through the roof, that whole area with Epic universe and everything else coming up right down the universal as well. I think universal is like, or uh, Williamsburg is a little bit of a sleeper right now in yeah. a good way. Is it in that area where like, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've been down there, but like where there's like a, there's a couple restaurants and like gas stations there. They almost look themed to sea world. Is it like in that little pathway? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's like a bunch of townhouses over there. They kind of yep. look like apartments, but you can buy them. Um, it's not a big place, but it's, I think, a little bit of a sleeper for from an investment standpoint. Yeah. Um, what's the best month to put a house up for sale? My dude, NYC Iron. I um, It depends on where you're at, like locally. So I'm from Michigan originally. And uh, you didn't ever want to list like November to March because the weather was garbage and people just didn't want to move during the holidays and all that kind of stuff. In Florida, we have a slowdown in like January sometimes. And that's about it. Like everything else is off to the races. So it's going to be market dependent. And I would just lean in on your local agent to make sure um, if you guys are moving down and you need a referral, reach out or ask Bree, uh, who just had her baby, by the way. Bree's his agent. They're buying in Claremont. Very cool. She had a baby today. Beautiful, beautiful girl. All right. Um, last, uh, well, we've got a couple more, couple more stories, and then we'll keep answering questions um, for for a bit here. So, Magic Band Plus Ultimate Guide at Disney. Ziggy knows Disney. This is a, a really probably one of the more thorough reviews. Would you say you found this? Yes. Uh, it gives you every little detail in here, from all the new features to pricing, everything. Um, Main thing, I haven't got my hands on one yet. I don't think you have either. Probably, I have not, but this one looks amazing. Yeah, I love. I want that this one. one. <clears throat> but they're, I think the base is thirty four ninety nine, um, which isn't crazy compared to what a normal Magic Band is. I mean, if you're thinking about the features, like yeah. some people might think they're a little much, but like they last a long time, and it, and because these are rechargeable, I don't think you're gonna have the same issue. It's like eventually a Magic Band will, it just won't work anymore. Right. Um, but what's the difference between the old Magic Bands and this one? The biggest thing is that it lights up and yep. it has like vibration and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, it'll, uh, you can experience things like with the shows, um, with some of the statues, like the 50th statues. If you like put the band near certain things, it'll vibrate, it'll light up. Yep. Um, uh, but it's not, it's not a crazy amount of features. One thing I did find online is that I, I'm in like one of the um, Disney Facebook pages and somebody said, if they're not over 70% like life like or, or charged, uh -huh. they won't have all the features, um, which I think is very interesting that okay. it needs to be like at that peak level. I'm assuming it's probably like the vibration. I bet that the lights still work until it like dies and stuff, but maybe the vibration or something. Um, I but, mean, how big, how big can the battery actually be in that little thing? Uh, it's like the size of like a watch battery, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, all right. And then have you seen this, this fab 50, my, my kids and I, we talk about this all the time. We're like, we should find all 50. And oh, that's I, cool. That is really I, cool. That's probably, I guess you go up with the magic band and it tracks which ones you, you grab. Yeah, that's cool. But all right. So 34 bucks, you think it's worth it? If you're a big Disney fan, yes. Uh, otherwise, I mean, if you stay at the hotel, it's going to give you a free one in the mail. And it's not yeah. going to be one of these. It's going to be the other ones. I have a ton of them laying around. <laughs> Will I buy one? Will I not? I don't know. It'll just depend. Like that one that you saw right there was very cool. Yeah. I think that's, but, I'm, I need to think I need to do it this weekend. Check it out. Um, all right. So let's talk about weather. Cause I, this is like such a weird thing. Like, Hey, how's the weather? Like you talk about that for small talk, but like, honestly, kind of the weather it's raining out right now. Um, but it's kind of a weird thing that we're, we're all noticing like hurricane season off to a slump, but could pick up. And that's one of the, this is, this is not Orlando, by the way, this is the Orlando Sentinel talking about uh, Miami on Saturday, yeah. um, cars under, underwater, but we haven't really had that bad of a, of a season, have we? No, I mean, it's been very light and the predictions were that it was going to be another heavy one. The last two years have been very heavy with like hurricanes and stuff. I think in Orlando in general, we don't get like crazy hurricanes just because we're yeah. more central. Um, yep. But on the coast uh, in Florida, it can get crazy. Yeah, that's the one thing people always ask, like, do I need to worry about hurricanes and talk to me about hurricane? Should I get flood insurance and all that? We're like, we're so centrally located that by the time a hurricane gets us, it's it's a hard rain. It's a really mm -hmm. hard rain is typically what happens. Um, the majority of our clients don't end up getting flood insurance. Although if you were like overly cautious, you could definitely do that. I mean, I've lived here 
a very large majority of my life in central Florida and we've yep. never like even in the very bad storms, as long as you're, you know, in a central area, you're not really going to have to deal with flooding. Yeah, I agree. Unless you're at a really low point. <laughs> yeah, unless you're in the valley. <laughs> uh, all right, so why are 100 degree days rare in Florida? This is an interesting one. Orlando has hit 100 degrees once this decade. And there's actually an article down here. Back in 2015 was the last time it hit 100 degrees. Um, but this is like, because it's apparently massively humid. I was like, I, I told you before, as we were doing show prep, I felt like I got a little meteorology degree. But like factor number one is why we don't get 100 degrees is, is because it's so humid. Yeah. Right. Which is interesting. I mean, because yeah. the the humidity here can be, it can be a lot on those hot days. It can make you feel, like, if you've ever been around people from other States, they come in and they're like, you know, a hundred degrees in, in Florida is like, you know, 115 where I am or whatever, because of the way <laughs> that it feels. I mean, there's nothing like whenever you get off the, like you get off the airplane in Florida, yep. if you've been somewhere else, you yeah. walk out and you take that first breath and you're like, I can't breathe because there's so much, it's so humid. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Greg says, wow, but it feels like a hundred all the time. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I, I totally agree. Um, all right. So here's a couple things. So uh, Patrick says, why or where does Oakland Park in Winter Garden rank on my Winter Garden communities and why? So we have to back out a little bit or, or zoom out a little bit and think about, okay, what do you consider Winter Garden? Do you consider Winter Garden the city of Winter Garden, which is just downtown? Or do you consider that like all of Horizon West and all that good stuff? If you're thinking about just the city of Winter Garden, like Oakland Park's the best, in my opinion. It's new homes. You've got lakefront. You can't use the lake because it's like a popka but it's there. Um, they've got a, a great community center with two pools. Like it's, you know, access to the, the, um, the <clears throat> West orange trail. It's awesome. Really, really good spot. If you're talking about in all of, uh, all of horizon West and winter garden together, it's definitely, you know, top three. It just depends on, um, depends on what you're looking for. Um, let's see where uh any good neighborhoods where you can buy a lot but not build for a year or two areas maybe so let's also please change your name to let's go and i'll, I'll say it every time <laughs> um <laughs> uh so here's the thing if you're in a homeowners association almost every neighborhood will require you to move forward kind of right away i know like bella colina out in mount verde claremont area um they give you like two years i think to build but most places are going to make you go right away which is why it's almost easier to go with some of these like downtown areas or some of these like unincorporated areas, buy something, tear it down, hang on to it. But if you're looking to be in a neighborhood, you're going to have to get going right away. Um, somebody says D town. Somebody was, I, I missed a, I missed a comment here. Like what was this guy talking about? Uh, pre sand play right here. What I miss. I don't know. I'm looking back. Oh, here we go. Uh, have I heard anything about a guess about fire Creek by Taylor Morrison and Gotha? And it's not <clears throat> Gotha. Yeah, it's Gotha. Is there, is there, there's another way some people say that. Anyways, I know they <laughs> recently ran bid on a few lots and send, somebody mentioned that it's somewhere around a million dollars. That's absolutely correct. Um, which that area, I mean, you're kind of like right outside. Gotha is right outside of downtown Windermere. You're without having to pay the downtown Windermere prices. So yeah, you're right on about a million bucks. Um, here we go. So what's the approval process like with your preferred lender? Can you share the current housing market for Cocoa Beach? We don't cover Cocoa yet, although gosh, I really want to, but in terms of the, the process to get pre-approved, you talk to a lender, we have somebody who's pretty great, uh, but essentially you go, you go in, they, they're going to pull your credit. They're going to ask for the past two years of income and then your assets. That's kind of like the, the baseline. They want to see what your debts are, what your credit's like, how much money do you make? And then, you know, where are you going to be bringing your down payment from? So if it's going to be a gift, if it's going to be, you know, the stock, is it in a bank somewhere? They just need to be able to source that. So that's like number one and then kind of rolling from there. You're getting ready to buy a house. Me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love to buy a house like literally at, at any moment. We already found you a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm what ready. Kin. I'm ready. No, man. It's time for you, man. Let's do this. Um, what other questions did we miss? I feel like we had a bunch come in all at the same time. <clears throat> Carlos uh, asks, are there any new projects close to Disney like Story Lake? You know, I don't know that. The, I mean, I know it's close ish to Disney. Um, the closest, honestly, to Disney is Horizon West, right? I'm trying to think of any other places like Golden Oaks sold out. That's in Disney. 
Celebration is super close. It's 10 minutes and they've got Island Village, which is, uh, you know, brand new. You still have a thousand houses there that they're going to be building out. Um, that's the two closest. And then it's Horizon <laughs> West is, is the next one from there. Um, yeah, what else, man? Uh, any updates with Disney's Lake Nona movement? Yeah, so they're basically going, they delayed it two ish plus years. They're looking to have people start moving in early 2024, and they're moving <clears throat> forward with their whole process of their billion dollar campus. You, we were out there with the team, right? The Wave Hotel, we could kind of mm. see them moving dirt and all that good stuff, which I think is a, it's a good thing. That area is so beautiful. Yeah, I really it's love just it. It's so nice. I mean, we walked from the hotel over to the other like area with all the restaurants and everything, and it's just so feels safe it feels comfortable it just liked it a lot yeah it's um yeah that whole the whole like town center area for lake nona is is finally starting to kind of come to fruition and i like it i mean we ate at chroma after we ate at the wave hotel chroma is like it's small plates and like we had a good time it was a good time that night the sliders were so good (laughs) the sliders were pretty phenomenal um all right what's up joel how are you buddy good to see you back on the thing we're gonna wrap up but i wanted to make sure i answered at least a few more questions rad what's up buddy he says he had 62 days of triple digits in texas so far this year but less humid where we're at so you'll take that Mm -hmm. Mm, i don't know i got a buddy that's in i don't remember which area of texas but he was like it was a hundred and like i don't know 10 or 115 the other day or something something insane (laughs) what 115 too hot hot. (laughs) Uh, home loan drew what's up home loan drew i'm I'm, i I can guess what this guy does for a living what's he do uh (laughs) probably a car dealer yeah probably uh we need to slow down and uh and it's intentional much welcome but no crash in sight yeah i definitely agree with that and so with that i think we're gonna wrap up tonight we got a bunch of stuff in short-term rentals that's why there's high vacancy magic plus whole types of good stuff going on here in orlando you still like living here after all this think? time, what do you think? I think you're a fan. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm a fan I, as well. I, I will tell you that I'm ready for the for that cold season. I'm ready. <laughs> I think I'm ready. I think as well. Yeah, I'm, I miss sweaters and like yeah. that kind of thing. But anyways, listen. Thank you all for watching live on Saturday night. Make sure you drop some comments and give us a little, little give us a little like. It helps boost it up in, in YouTube. That means that means the world to Chase and I. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. See you guys. See you guys.